This is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. It's another gorgeous day here in paradise. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna go check, you know, the Quimuck and some other trees that have fruit on them, lemon tree and some other things that I usually do. Uh, we're a biodynamic certified rare tropical fruit farm and I grow these what people use as rare house plants. They're kind of new to me, about two years. Well, I guess I've been growing Monstera Deliciosa for six years, but um, the other philodendrons and anthuriums and stuff I just got into and I'm kind of obsessed with them. This is philodendron gigantium blizzard. It's gorgeous, gorgeous plant. Leaves get gigantic on these things. It's Jose Buono, philodendron. It's a philodendron domesticum, variegata. It started sending out solid white leaves, kind of, but now it's going back to green, thank God. I see the stripe, green and, green and white in there. <clears throat> kind of, it's not good when your variegated plants start going all white. They're all looking good. So we're biodynamic, so we grow everything in biodynamic compost that we make here on the farm. I, you know, I think I want to push biodynamics more. I had uh, uh, somebody moved here from Costa Rica um, to Miami and uh, is trying to uh, convert an old growth Longan farm down in Miami to a biodynamic farm. The birds approve. So it's, uh, you know, it's been used in, con you know, every chemical known to man, this Longan farm, and wanted to know what they could do about it. Why does this camera keep doing that? I got a new, new phone, so I see it does take better pictures. So we grow everything and make everything in biodynamic compost and we dry farm everything here on the outside in the farm uh, so we don't water anything as we don't have to. And um, that relieves a lot of stress and it's stressful growing, I guess, for production, but I kind of don't worry about production. I just do what I get orders for and kind of don't push it. And that seems to work out <laughs> well, well. I don't have a website selling stuff, um, but I sell enough. I sell enough to know that I wouldn't want to sit and package up seeds all day long every day or oversee that. So um, yeah, that's never gonna happen. But I can do the farm like this. I have plenty of, we have plenty of birds and other wildlife that, um, they destroy the fruit and I can collect the seeds and then sell the seeds. So <clears throat> some for them, some for me, some for you. And that seems to work until these trees get gigantic. We are kind of young. Um, so people, a lot of people have a real issue with uh, this. Um, you know, this looks unkempt to, to people. Uh, it is unkempt, and we don't even walk on it. I just have a path that I go through. Nature is unkempt, and um, if you want all the cycles to operate correctly, the you know the natural cycles, the water cycle, the nitrogen cycle, the carbon cycle, <clears throat> all the nutrient cycles, you kind of have to. Remove yourself from the the uh, 
micromanagement of every square inch of your space. So not disturbing the soil by not walking on it brings fertility. <clears throat> in the form of life that moves into it, hopefully. If it's compacted, very little will grow in it and your trees will always suffer. And everyone grows on lawns, so... Um, yeah, it's like the worst spot to grow trees, but that's how they grow plants and trees. Not plants in general, but, you know, per perennial tree crops like citrus and almonds and stuff. They, and, and, and grapes, they mow, they're in between the trees with tractors and, um, that just compacts the soil. So it just, it's like right there, you're doing something wrong. You can't, um, you know, it's like if you had a vegetable garden and you were driving all around it and then you put a lettuce in the center of it. That's what it's like. It's, it's just doesn't make sense to do that. Especially trees, they have roots that reach way out past their trunk. So um, when you stay off of it and stuff grows into it, That stuff is all nutrients. If stuff is growing in your orchard floor, well, like this, you know that it can support your tropical fruit trees. But yet the first thing everyone does is cut it all back and mow it all down and drive on it and compact the soil, which changes the soil pH. So there's a reason to all this, and it's to put carbon into the soil, the living root. So to buffer the pH. <clears throat> so we got wood ducks in our pond. Come on, boom. Come on, wood ducks. We had three mama ducks, wood ducks, have ba bring their babies to this swamp. And there they are, all grown up. They flew off. The mother ducks have babies where they were born. They have babies in the old growth trees. And then the babies jump out and then they find the water. They're pretty cool. And they make this nice noise. This little weird whistling voice um, that I like. So, I, yeah people coming by here and then you know I get triggered <laughs> triggered by comments that people make <laughs> oh, I just am out here and by myself too much and um, I get affected by people it's usually okay I you know it's it's okay but you know one of my triggers is when people say well they find what you know, people that seen your videos find what you're doing interesting, but they just can't get past the, the weeds. Well, because they're used to looking at dead space. Dead space on the highways, dead space in the cities, dead space in their living room. And they don't get into nature enough and uh, observe what's going on in nature. And when they do, they talk about how beautiful the state park was, blah, blah, blah. But then when they see something like this, which is a park with tropical fruit trees planted into it, they judge it. A lawn, nothing moves into it. You look out the window at your lawn, there's no life basically in there. Yeah, you might see a bird or two walking across the lawn every once in a while, but that's it. I mean, the raccoons, the rabbits, the snakes, the bugs, and the birds, the different birds, all come to this. Because that's where they live. And we as humans take their homes away and then call them pests if they try to, like, walk across your yard or pick your fruit. 
Um, I don't know. I didn't see any ripe Kwai Muk. Um, that is my favorite fruit. Mangoes are looking really good. This mango needs to uh, flush out. And that one needs to flush out. And this sugar loaf needs to flush out. But considering we had a horrible drought this year, I'm very happy with everything, the way it's survived. Because this swamp dried up completely during the summer, which is completely unheard of in Florida. And um, now it's full. Yeah, all this stuff that people hate in Florida. It's okay in the state park, but it's not okay in your yard. It's just, I don't know. I don't know what it's gonna take to get us to the point where people see this and don't equate it with unkempt and dirty. Because that's what they're doing when they say they don't like it. It's colonialism. It's ingrained in us. And trees grow with plants and next to plants. And they don't compete with each other. And if you want to see if your tree is growing well, or will grow well, you have to grow out your orchard floor to see what grows in it well. And if nothing comes up in it, or it doesn't get robust and thick, probably your tree isn't gonna grow well in there. <clears throat> and then everyone has too many nutrients. There's too many nutrients applied. Um, but everyone thinks that all the plants are like individual things and they, they operate and grow differently. All the plants here grow the exact same way. When I hear somebody ask, how do you do this? Or how do you grow that? Or what do you do about this? I know instantly they don't know how to grow plants. The bird people, not those. all plants grow the same way and it just blows my mind when I hear people say I have to plant a nitrogen fixer uh, monocrop in the orchard floor because it's like <clears throat> all the plants grow the same way just some are better at hoarding nitrogen and fixing nitrogen. Some meat need more nitrogen, so they're better at it. But all the other plants grow the same way. The aeroids grow exactly like the sugar cane. The coconut grows exactly like the tea plant. The banana grows exactly like the, the uh, ice cream bean. The ice cream bean grows exactly like the black sapote. The only difference being some like more shade, some require more moist, and some like to feed more. But you don't have to have a special set of nutrients for individual plants. You just have to focus on soil health. I love this new camera. This place is loaded with birds in case anybody hasn't noticed. Um, I love birds and I go to a lot of other people's places and not, not, none of them are as full of birds as this place. It's like, this is where they come. The achacha grows just like the canistel. The canistel grows just like <sighs> this thing, which I can't think of the name of, crinum. The crinum grows just like the ginger. It's soil health. 
it's the soil health. And to get true soil health, you have to stay off of it. And you have to let what grows there naturally stay. You can't micromanage it out, but you can to make it look better for those people that find this repulsive, which I find hard to believe that anybody would find this repulsive. It's just a, a, a box answer that was ingrained due to colonialism. It's just the same response I get from too many people. It's the same exact response. So I know it's something that's learned. So you can like add more plants and they will push other plants out. <clears throat> the stuff you don't like, the weeds and the grass. The grass is very beneficial for building soil. Um, you can't really build soil without it. it soil is built in tall grass, so it's not gonna build in your short lawn and adding compost isn't building soil. can't get past the weeds. That's a trigger for me because I know everyone that comes over here finds this place gorgeous. So um, if they don't, they wouldn't be coming over here. <clears throat> I don't know. You got to add nutrients um, in the form of compost. You got to make your own compost. Everyone needs to make their own compost. There's no reason why everyone isn't making compost. I mean, really, we need to uh, try to fix Florida. There's some people that are trying to do it and we just need to get more people on board because Florida is an amazing place. And we need to start providing the habitat for the wildlife that lives here because that's what's going to create the fertility for your tree. I mean, that's how paradise is created. Not by mowing it and killing everything, but by growing trees of purpose in wild spaces, naturally. A guy from Costa Rica, Lawrence. He was a nice guy. I could see uh, him coming up here again. He's taken like three years of biodynamics schooling. I, you know, I never, I'm self-taught. Uh, it's okay, I have my biodynamic farm inspection on the 13th of October, the on-farm inspection. Uh, I think the person's coming out from California because there's just no biodynamic farms here. And um, we need to like change that, I think. People get a little freaked out when you start talking about <clears throat> planting by the moon cycle and Bearing cow manure and a cow horn for six months at the fall equinox and digging it up at the spring equinox and then foliar spraying your entire property with that cow manure. <clears throat> but they get on board with the Korean natural farming and the rice uh, indigenous microorganisms. It's just an older form of natural farming that focuses on the health of the system, meaning everything, the health of the cow, the health of the people, the health of the plants, the health of the wildlife, the health of the native plants. So in my pictures I see of biodynamic farms, they all look like conventional farms still. They're mowed lawns. They're mowed fields. 
I don't think you can really take too much um, in order to create fertility, meaning you gotta leave some of the fruit. That's the fruit that the animals get. It's just how I feel. I know not everyone believes that, but I'm just expressing what I, I believe. I mean, I have, I'm kind of different when it comes to uh, growing, but when I look at tropical fruit farms in Asia or in like Thailand or the Philippines or Costa Rica or Belize or Ecuador, Colombia, they look like this. But for some reason, the mowing the orchard floor to grow food, perennial trees, is what people expect in Florida and California. <clears throat> Another guy from Costa Rica, that, he's, that was the, that's what I was gonna say, that's the state tree of, Flor of Costa Rica. So he was very impressed by that giant elephant here. He had a different name for it. I wish I could think of it. I, anyway, I'm gonna try. Lemons, that's what I need to get. I'll go over here. Yeah, probably people would be appalled by this branch this huge, two branches actually, that got lifted up probably by a, uh, you know, a micro tornado right here during Ian and um, flipped it upside down. But I like how it looks in the yard and I kind of believe that the um, undisturbed, uh, uncut, un chopped up um, tree limbs and stuff um, provide some sort of benefit to the system that wood chips alone doesn't provide. So I like to leave some, a lot actually, large logs intact where they drop um, when they get damaged by hurricanes. This branch got got twisted too. There must have been a, like a, a microburst right here. That's part of living in Florida. Um, fortunately, all this environmental stressors that are affecting us and giving people anxiety, um, excess rain, excess drought, too much pollution, is all fixed by nature. By putting natural systems in place that work to buffer environmental stress, whether it be man-made or natural. All this stuff here during drought is just water held in place. That's what it is. Water and nutrients, because there's nutrients. All the nutrients your plants need are in every plant. All plants are the same. All plants grow the same. Yes, some are epiphytes. Epiphytes meaning they're better at probably harvesting nitrogen from the air than non-epiphytes. That's all. They're just better at doing certain nutrient cycles. But they all grow the same way. They all have the same needs. They all need the same nutrients. They need the same nutrients that we need. That's why we eat them. These mulberries are like kicking out uh, fruit again. I think that's world's best. I'm not sure. That's some creature over here. It could be the tortoise. Looks like a tortoise hole. Um, I 
We have uh, gopher tortoises here that actually came in off the road and moved in here. <clears throat> there was a huge live oak tree here that I used to grow um, dragon fruit on. There it is. Creatures here. That looks like a pretty big animal in there, though. It might not be a gopher tortoise. Might be something else. So there's the leftover uh, dragon fruit. The vines, the vines can be a problem, but I uh, transferred all the dragon fruit onto other uh, other. Uh, you can see the dragon fruit in there. Other growing places throughout the farm. There was some dragon fruit in there that wasn't. It wasn't the best dragon fruit, and so I didn't really, I didn't care that much about it. I just wanted, I had Bruni in there, and I had Voodoo Child in there. I wanted both of those, so. But I had a couple that were not very good, and I had the, the uh, small yellow one, which I didn't like, so it's in there somewhere. But I did not transfer that anywhere else. It's a big achacha tree growing in here. Yeah, achachiro. That's why we started this farm, was for the Garcinias. Uh, they grow beautifully, naturally, uh, without water. It's a seed-grown black sapote, growing next to this tree that's the state tree of uh, Costa Rica. It's a nitrogen-fixing tree. Like I said before, all plants are nitrogen fixers. All plants operate the same way. You just have to have the biology in your system so that they can grow naturally like plants do. Um, it's like all my life, it was like, did I water today? Did I water today? And it's like, it was always a stress, a stress thing growing plants. Did I turn the water on? Did I water that tree? <sighs> oh, what a relief to not have to ever um, worry about that again. Um, Florida's amazing that you can do that here. Those lemons are like so good. It's almost a cup of juice per lemon. And... Um, those are from bird pecks. We don't sell lemon fruit, but I sell lemon seeds. Uh, this is our seed grown lemon. They kind of come true to seed, um, or they do come true to seed so far. Uh, they're all kind of different sized fruits though. You can get big fruit and little fruit on the same tree. And um, that just produces like crazy. And doesn't ever need anything. A guy that was here that's like taking over a, uh, a little a section of a, uh, or a, a commercial longan farm, 45 year old growth to biodynamics. He's like, oh, what about this stuff? That's just from the drought, the yellow leaves and it's from the drought and being in full sun. Um, the trees are very healthy. Uh, Here's the new growth since we got some rain. We get all that rain and then we haven't had any rain. It's like, I still see standing water in people's yards. It's just sad. Look at the sugar apples, even though I'm kind of over the sugar apples, but I know we still have quite a few fruit on the trees. Um, these lemons are so good. So, this lemons is a tree that I pick every fruit. I use every fruit. Unlike star fruit, I don't use every fruit. Unlike guava fruit, I don't use every fruit. But lemons, I use every single fruit. I use lemons every day. So I'm thrilled that we have these lemons now that are so easy to grow without any stress. I mean, that's seed grown lemon planted when it was two inches tall directly in the orchard floor and never watered. 
and basically just walked away from. That's what you get when you have a robust orchard floor. Yeah, so converting a, uh, a, a, a commercial orchard floor or a commercial orchard, a section of it. He wouldn't, the owner wouldn't let him have the whole thing to do, but a section of the orchard floor, or the orchard. I keep saying orchard floor, because, well, that's what you gotta focus on, the soil, and um, should be your what you look at the most. So they've been mowing it for 45 years, and, um, but it's in Miami and it's on rock, so. I really don't have any experience doing that, but they said they buy humus. Where they get that, I have no idea. Zebu manure basically is pure humus. Um, Zebu manure, desi cow manure is uh, undoubtedly probably the best manure for growing food crops that I've come across. We just happen to have the miniature Desi Cal, the Zebu, the miniature Zebu. Yeah, these sugar apples are good. Uh, not the most attractive fruit, but it looks good. I'll eat it. They're good. These are chewy sugar apples. They're the ones I like. Um, I haven't come down here and looked in a while at this fruit, but I know there was a lot on here that I'm not seeing and I'm wondering. <laughs> I wonder what happened. Oh, no, it's there. I just wasn't seeing it. There it is. Oh, there's fruit on there. This is that alama tree that's a grafted alama on pond apple, I'm sure, that had a huge giant flower, which I see right here. Um, alama, you know, Anona diversifolia. I think it's still called that. Or did they change the name? Anyway. Once known as Anona diversifolia, could be something else now. I, I'm not on top of it. Sorry. Um, the Alama and the pond apple rootstock. Just that tree just suffers um, during drought. They were amazed by the the mushrooms. I see some animals been eating them, so um, it must be edible. That one would have to be. This uh, Adamoya has got fruit on it. Yeah, I mean, where do you think all the native lizards live? They live in the tall grass and the stuff that you're not mowing. People complain about the iguanas. Well, you, you're making a runway with, for the iguanas by mowing all the grass. They can run real fast. You've uh, eradicated all the native uh, lizards and stuff with your uh, monocrop lawns. I just don't like this. Well, you don't have a tropical fruit farm like me. <clears throat> you have a lawn that you look at through the window or when you're driving out your garage. Uh, I don't see very many people playing on their lawns in Florida. But I know that people like to walk on trails through this. There's a lot of fruit on these trees still. Um, and they like coming here. I don't know. It's just, I don't know what it's going to take to um, get people to uh, Wake up, um, you know, mowing lawns create runoff and cause water flash floods. Uh, we just went through that with Ian. I'm sure not, you know, water from the ocean or water from a river, but water from rain. We didn't, we never have any problems. 12 inches, no problem, no standing water. And it's because of this. So this looks like a monocrop lawn and 
You notice there's not a lot of trees growing in it. Um, that's a sign of compaction. After three years of not mowing in it, it still looks like that. That's total compaction, definitely. So what I did, and I did not do down here on the other section, is I buried the biodynamic horns in the ground rather than use the foliar spray. And I think that's kind of what fixed that area down there. And uh, obviously I have like two or three areas now I see that I need to <coughs> bury a horn in. It'll be my third year this coming year in 2023. This is a longan. Uh, I forgot to show him my longan trees, the Shree Shampoo. I have a few longans here. Um, I didn't plant a lot of longans because back when I planted this place, the prop, uh, longans were like $2 a pound. And I thought we were going to be a tropical fruit. Uh, I thought I was going to, you know, be <laughs> totally into selling tropical fruit. I mean, I wanted some longans, but it's not what we specialized in. Um, I love longans. Uh, that's why I do have some of the trees, like more than one or two, because I love them. Our, we have bigger longans that produce at our beach house, though. The longans up here, this far north, Port St. Lucie North, didn't produce this year, I don't believe. I don't know of any that of the, the big pick-your-own longans on 20 acres in Fort Pierce uh, that's been their old uh, grove not 45 years old, but it's at least, I think, 20 years old. They didn't get any fruit this year. Uh, I, that was the freeze, from the freeze. Those, those long ants didn't flower this year, those little grafted long ant trees. Anyway, this is Florida Natural Farm in Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. I hope you have a beautiful day.